Unless you have been living under a rock, you would have heard of ChatGPT and other artificial intelligence models. But the question is, what role does AI models have when it comes to research and for evaluation purposes? This is the question. Now, some people believe that we should leverage AI to the fullest capacity for research and evaluation purposes. Some people believe, though, that AI should play more of a limited role. And then there are others who believe that AI has no place when it comes to academic research. For some persons, this is downright cheating to use AI for academic reasons. So the next 60 minutes, we'll be exploring this question about the role of AI. But most importantly, if you decide to use AI for evaluation or research, we hope to share with you practical tips that you can use AI in an ethically responsible and safe way. My name is Anne-Marie Brown, and I'm joined by my colleague, who is the head of the Center for Research Methods, Dr. Philip Adu. Thank you, Anne, for having me. All right. So it's a pleasure. So yeah. I think you're the perfect person for this conversation because on one hand, you're an expert in qualitative research methods. You have written several publications when it comes to qualitative data research, qualitative methods. And also, you were one of the first persons to publicly be using ChatGPT. So my question to you is, why did you start to use ChatGPT? You were a forerunner when nobody else was even using it publicly. Why did you start to use AI modules? So um, it's... It's, um, let, let me go a little bit back. So, you know, I've been providing support to students and also faculty members and practitioners for um, close to 10 years, uh, providing them support about methodology, how to collect data, how to analyze, what are the research questions, what methodology that you have to use. All these um, are some of the struggles that, you know, researchers face. And when AI came, I just went, realize that, okay, can we, uh, can I incorporate AI in terms of asking the system, okay, the kind of question that you have to have in when you want to do research, maybe how to collect data, how to analyze, how to present your findings. So I realized that, you know, AI can play a very good role in doing research. So realizing it, I, I, I came to, um, the realization that, okay, let me also share that information to my followers for them to learn about AI and, and also learn how to use it as an assistant, helping you to do a very good research and also accelerating the research process, reducing stress and the struggle of analyzing your data or um, the struggle of thinking about what kind of question do I have to ask participants? So that really caused me to let people know about, you know, the potentiality of using AI to do research to help you to learn more about, you know, people and people's experience and also accelerate the research process. All right. So, Dr. Adu, you're in the camp, the first camp then, that believe AI should be leveraged. That's the camp you're in. Is that yeah. <laughs> yes, you know, because, because I, I think that um, doing research sometimes it takes a lot, uh, sometimes it takes a long time. And um, imagine that you have an expert who is you not know, an AI that you can go and ask the system a question. Let's say you have a purpose of the study, but you don't know the kind of research question that you have to um, um, ask, right? So that you'll be able to collect rich data. You can ask the system, okay, this is my purpose of my study. Can you suggest to me some of the questions of that or research question that I have to um, Ask so that I'll be able to get rich information to address my research question. Uh, the, the question: What about interviews? Right? What kind of interview question should I ask participants so that it will be consistent with the research question? You can ask the system, and then the system will suggest information, and then you evaluate and find out and 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 take some of the information and use it to do your research. All right. So very interesting. So Dr. Adu is in the camp that we should leverage AI as much as possible. But maybe you have a different opinion. If you're 
joining in this event, please use the chat to write your responses. What role do you believe AI play when it comes to research and evaluation? We want this to be interactive. So just write in the chat what your thoughts are so we can have a discussion on that. So for me, I, I am also in the camp that we should leverage AI as much as possible. It's here to stay and it's good not to be left behind. But Dr. Mm -hmm. What specific ways have you been using AI? You spoke of students and helping research questions, but what are the specific ways you have been leveraging AI in your work? Yes, yeah, so uh, in the area of data analysis, so sometimes you see the data uh, in qualitative study, sometimes the data is so huge and you know sometimes humanly impossible for you to analyze the data manually. So what I do is, uh, is to also look into what tool can I use for me to make sense of the data? So I can also use I uh, use um, ChatGPT, um, upload some of the transcript and ask the system. Okay, this is the uh, the purpose of my study. This is my research question. Can you review the transcript and then help me to identify quotes and themes to help me to address this research question? And then the system can suggest information for me, and I just don't take that information and use it. I have to make sure that, you know, they are consistent with the research question. And also, you can also do further, uh, ask further question and say, okay, um, this is the theme that we came up with. Can you extract significant information from the themes, uh, from the transcript, so that I, um, I can connect it to the, 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 the themes that I have? And the system can suggest, and then you have to also make sure that you evaluate those significant information that the system has extracted. And so it's all about me using it to assist my work so that I'll be able to do my work in an efficient manner, right? But I don't allow AI to lead my work that I have to do. I like, I, I use AI to assist. One example is that um, if let's say I'm doing a study, and I'm not sure about the theory that I have to use for my theoretical framework. Can I ask an AI to say, okay, this is the study that I'm doing. Can you suggest a theory for me so that I can use? And a system can suggest some theories and then you'll be able to evaluate some of them and then choose the one that you think is appropriate. So it, there's a lot of ways that you can leverage AI tools and I have personally used and it's really helping me for content my research. All right, so fair enough for research questions, using AI as an assistant. And but if I ask you, what are your top three AI modules that you use? The top three uh, that you recommend yes, anyone so, listening at the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you no know, chat GPT will come first. Um uh, I use GPT plus, so this means that I have access to uh, I'll be able to create my own um custom GPT, right? My own chatbots for a specific job, right? So, um, and also I use Cloud AI. Um, that's also, is also helpful, especially for researchers. You can upload your transcript, you can upload an article and ask the system questions so that you can get more information. I also like Perplexity AI. Perplexity AI is very good. It, it's it, the function of Perplexity AI is similar to Google, right? You ask the system a question, then the system gives you an answer, but also provide you a source, right? So it, it really addresses the issue of, of, you know, the system giving you wrong information because it has provided, okay, this is the source of my information, right? Mm -hmm. So if you said, okay, I'm doing a research in burnout, or I'm doing research about mental health, can you give me suggest any article or information for me right the system can you know suggest information summarize and provide you and then you can go with with that so i like really perplexity ai because it provides you not only a summary but also provide you the link to the information so that you can even click on an article or the information and read more about i can share you some of the the power um not the powerpoint but the website so that you can look at uh let me see what i can find a second screen uh, so just to recap while dr adu looks for his screens is he recommends chat gpt because you can custom your own assistant within chat gpt 
He recommends perplexity.ai mm -hmm. and claw.ai. But remember, claw.ai is not available in every region. There are workarounds mm -hmm. around that that I won't discuss here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Privately, I will tell you how to get around that. I'm in the Netherlands and claw.ai is not available here, but we do have it. So those are the three main tools. And I see he has here on his screen showing. Walk us through, Dr. Adu, what you're showing us. So the first one is, you know, ChatGPT. I have the paid option. So I have the option to create my own chatbot. And so when you go to Explore, and then you can go to My GPTs. Um, these are a list of the, um, the AI tools I've created under that. It's so simple to create your own. Um, now we are, you know, we are moving from general generic AI tools to AI agent, customized AI that knows a lot about you a little bit and knows what you want and can provide you what you ask for, right? So one example is that, let's say you have a huge amount of data that you want to analyze. You can go to ChatGPT, create your own data analysis AI tool, then you'll be able to upload the transcripts and ask the system questions. You'll be able to do that. Let's say you want to help people to think about the best way of constructing qualitative research questions, right? You can create AI, um, custom AI tool, and then you'll be able to uh, interact with the system. And the process of creating the tool is so easy. And um, we, we're going to have um, a master, a master class coming on the uh, 24th of April. I'll be showing students or client or anybody if you want to attend, I will showing you how to create uh, your own custom GPT to do a specific job for you, right? And then let's move on to Perplexity AI. So that with the good thing about Perplexity AI is that you can act, tell the system that, okay, I want you to search information from academic field. Or uh, my question is related to writing. So every information that you're going to give me should be related to writing. Or I want YouTube information, right? So you can choose the focus or you can just use the general focus and then you ask the system a question and the system will provide you um, information at the same time, provide you a summary at the same time, provide you the link to that information. So it's so useful. The last one is the Cloud AI. Um, Cloud AI is similar to ChatGPT, but um, the only difference is that, you know, it's more tame in the sense that they have made it such a way that it will not provide you any kind of harmful information. So they have two main main agents or model. So the model that you are chatting with, right? And then that second model is supervised the first model, right? So we call it constitutional AI. So the first, the second model, whenever you interact with the first model, the second model makes sure that the information that is given you is uh, not harmful, is useful for you. So that's what I like about you know um, cloud AI, and it's very good for using it for research. So, so I, and also during the master uh, master class, I'll be talking more about that, how to use all these useful tools. There are other ones, um, but these are the ones that I really personally use and I like them. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Adu. And just to reiterate that, I mean, it's just a 60-minute session today. We don't have time to go through, but like for creating your own AI assistant, I have done it. It's, it's so very easy, but we'll go in depth in the master class. You will see the information flashing across your screen. If you want to know how to be part of this master class, there is a promo code that's only valid for a few hours. So I would be quick for a discount. But information is on your screen. But let me go to some of the comments. I see that what you have been saying, Dr. Adu, is resonating because I see here Anne says, I agree um, and have been using AI to complement my work. That said, in academic research, this is Anne's comment, we have to consider ethical standards and specifically how we will share our process with an institutional review board. 
Do you have an information on how to IRBs are viewing this process and the ethical consideration? Great question, Anne. Yes, I think, you know, um, we, we don't have to change anything about ethics. We just have to make sure that every action that you are taking in doing research is following the ethical standard. Um, so if you see AI to as an assistant, right, it's very good for you to let people be aware about how the AI is going to assist you. So one example is that if you're going to use AI to, to help you to analyze your data, you can be transparent and let IRB know that when you collect your interview data, you'll be using AI to, to facilitate the process of making sense of your data, right? And making them aware will be helpful so that they'll also know the kinds of tools that you are using. They can also give you some kind of um, advice about how to make sure that you are protecting participant information. Um, for ChatGPT, you have an option for you to um, indicate that you don't want the system to use your data, right? So, you know, you, you have control over your data. Cloud AI doesn't really use your data to train their model, so it's very good. So I think that one thing that we have to do is that we have to be transparent, right? You have to be able to disclose what you're going to use the AI for, right? That's, that's, that's also the ethical way. We have to be responsible. Participants have given you their rich information, so you have to make sure that the participant information is being protected, right? And then we, we have to make sure that we are using AI to as a way of assisting us to do a specific job. So this means that you have to be able to evaluate all the information that uh, the AI is giving you and making sure that they are right. So this means that you have to be a critical reviewer of the result. Because when you go to the AI, all the AI, uh, most of the AI um, tools, right, they say that the system can give you wrong information. Right. So you have to be not all the information that you're going to get from AI is right. So you have to be very cautious. You have to make sure that you evaluate all the information that it provides you. You have to uh, make sure that you can even question the answer. Right? Imagine that the system gives you some a summary. You can say that, OK, can you review this summary and make sure that they best reflect the document that I gave you? Or can you review these themes and make sure that you are addressing the research question? So you are forcing the system to do self-reflection and self-evaluation. That is very also another way of making sure that you are getting quality information from the system and also making sure that you are using the system in an ethical way. What I don't like is to let a system do things for you without evaluating what the system, um, especially when you're doing research, right? Imagine that you, you tell the system, oh, can you write um, my, ref my findings for me, right? I think it's not ethical. What you can do is that you can write your findings and then tell the system to edit. So this is where it takes me to the next kind of um, uh, AI tool, we call it Pipa Pal. It's, is so helpful. Let me share that with you. Uh, so this is the two that I'm talking about. So peoplepower.com, you know, after you have written your or drafted your article or manuscript or your, your research report, you can upload that information to the, the system. The system will go through and identify things that you have to change and suggest what you have to change. This is where you use AI to assist you but not doing things for you, right? So um, you can try it out and see. Um, it's just like an editor, right? Giving you suggestions about the construction of the words. One thing about, good thing about this software is that their model were trained on um, research articles. So they know how the uh, research articles are written. So it's going to be very useful for you to use uh, this kind of thing, right? So um, being uh, allowing the system to assist you is the best way. Um, 
not um, um, is the best way of using the system instead of allowing it to do things for you, right? Because you are not gaining anything. Imagine that what is the difference between you and a person who doesn't know how to do research? If both of you can ask the system to write a research article for you, right? There's no difference. But I think the difference is that uh, the only thing, the best way is that you do the, uh, you allow the system to support you as you are doing a specific task, starting from your topic, right? If you are not sure about the topic, if you want to narrow down your research topic, you can ask the system, I have this topic, can you help me to narrow down, right? Or have this topic, I need articles. Can you suggest some of the articles for me? Perplexity AI can help you with that. Oh, I have my data. Can you help me develop themes and let me review the themes and make sure that they are addressing my research question and also representing the data that I have? The system can help you. Oh, I want to write my findings, but I don't know how to interpret my data. Can you give me some ideas? It's like you are talking to an expert providing you some suggestions, and then you take that some of the information and use it to do what you have to do. But you know what's very interesting, Dr. Adu, is we don't get these questions when we're talking about in vivo or SPSS, <laughs> mm -hmm. right, as an assistive tool, but definitely with AI models. And at this point, I have to give a big shout out to Lynn. Because Lynn has been our assistant today. She has been writing out the, well, I, I hope your pronoun is she. I'm sorry if it is not. But Lynn has been writing out the masterclass links for persons. There's a mm -hmm. masterclass. And yes, Lynn, it will be recorded for viewing later. So if you can't attend the first live session, that will be recorded. And as we said, it's going across your screen again, how to jo join the masterclass. We don't have a lot of time today to go to show you how to use the different AI models. But in the masterclass, we will go through ethics and go more in depth. So if you look on your screen, you will see the information there with the discount code. The code is only valid for a couple hours and there's not a lot. I think there's only five tickets, discounted tickets available. So you have to be quick. All right. So moving on. I see there was a question here from Jeff. I don't know if you can see Jeff's question, Dr. Adu, but Jeff is asking, how well does AI work for coding in an inductive manner? For example, grounded theory approach. So a technical question from Jeff, right? Yes. How does AI work for coding in an inductive manner? Example, grounded theory approach as opposed to a more deductive approach. Is this a masterclass question or you can tackle it now? Uh, it's a masterclass, but I can, you know, start with it, right? I think that it's so interesting that AI is advancing so fast and it can do many things for you, right? Uh, I even created um, a, um, a custom AI tool that, you know, researchers can use to analyze their data if they want to develop a theory, right? Using a grand theory, I think I have a link there. You can email me and I can give you the link to the, the chat box. So yes, it can do that. You know, what the AI tool wants you is that if you can give the system a little bit of context, a little bit of background, if you can give the system a role to play, right? So you can say you are a qual expert qualitative researcher who is um, have a good expertise in granite theory. Can, and um, this is the study, this is what the study is all about. Can you review this article or no, review this transcript and come up with themes and a connection between them so that I'll be able to help, it will, uh, that, that information will be able to help me to develop a theory. Yes, the system can do that, right? You might not get a perfect information, but it gives you some something to start working on. And as I as I um, as time goes on, things will be perfect. Can I think about this one? Years ago, uh, we were you, when you interview participants, you have to listen to the audio and then transcribe. Now there's automatic transcription. At the beginning, it wasn't all that good, but now you upload your transcript and then the system AI can transcribe. 
it's not 100 percent but it's about 90 percent right Cor uh, accuracy for you right so things are getting better and ai will get better companies are investing billions of dollars in ai right so it's gonna be perfect we will reach a stage where ai will be more intelligent than us right we have to prepare our mind we're going to reach ag um we call it general artificial intelligence and we are getting close right and companies and they know that that's why they are spending billions of dollars in, in investing in ai so i think that um yes you can use it for data analysis and also a time will come a time will come that you will need just few weeks to do a huge research. Imagine that there's a software, AI tool, that you can say that I'm doing this research, this is my purpose of my study, this is my research question. Can you identify potential participant, interview the participant, transcribe the audio, give me the findings, and give me my report? There will be a time, it will happen. Even it will take maybe a day. The system will go and look for somebody who qualified and the system will interview, not you interviewing the participant. AI will conduct the interview for you. AI will transcribe the interview. AI will analyze. AI will give you the results within, within if the person, within even a day, right? So it will, it will reach a, a, a time where articles will be a lot production of research will be a lot because AI is accelerating the process and we cannot just stay and watch. It's very important. We shouldn't stay and watch because things are going so fast. And then are we you... redundant then, Dr. Ado? What, what are, we redundant? are we redundant as researchers, academia? Is there a role for the human in this process where AI can do everything? Um, there's a role because remember you are a super you are supervising the AI. Now when I told the AI that to go and interview participants and then give me all the results, I don't just take the results and present it. I'm responsible. So AI, although AI is might be skillful than you, might be intelligent than you, you are supervising the AI. You are responsible about the results. So if you present the results, for a conference, you are not going to say that, oh, I'm so sorry, AI gave it to me. No, you can say that AI helped you to do this one and you are super, you, you make sure that everything is right. You have to review, make it, that's why you also have to have a background in doing research, right? So although AI might do things for you, you also have a background in analyzing qualitative data. How will you know whether the theme that the AI has created is good if you don't have any background in analyzing qualitative data. So the skill, so now we are moving from generating knowledge, we are giving that responsibility to the AI. What we are, our responsibility now, now is supervising the AI, questioning their knowledge that they are developing, making sure that they are accurate. That's our job now. And we have to be, and make sure that you know we are scaling that job because you know things are going so fast and we have to be uh be able to be um be be updated on, on concerning this issue so what you're saying then is that the lead researcher will not be redundant but the research assistant will is there still a place for a human research assistant I think there's a place, so this is what is going to happen. AI is bridging the gap between the novice researcher and expert researcher, right? So now, because of AI, a novice researcher can do research like an expert. Let me give you this, this what is happening now. You know, you can just type for AI to give you an image, right? Just type in. You can even type for AI to generate lyrics for you and generate a song for you. Without AI, an expert has to do this, right? So you see how AI is bridging between music mus musicians and artists and also the novice ordinary person like me. Mm -hmm. As we are talking, I can create a music right now. When, I, when you use Suno AI, when you go to Suno AI, 
you can just test, create a music about life in Ghana or life in Africa or life in Europe. And the system will create a lyrics for you using ChatGPT and the system will create the music for you within seconds. So you see how it is it's changing things so fast and I think that it's, it's exciting at the same time, it's, it's scary, but I think that we don't have time to be scared. What we have time is to learn and then use it and to improve our lives and the tasks that we do every day. And that's what we have to do. Okay. All right. Which now takes us back. I'm looking at the chat. Anton, hope I pronounced it correctly, had a question. And this is, have you noted cases wherein AI hallucinated? So for, for hallucination, it's basically giving an output that doesn't exist, where the AI tells you something that's inaccurate or false. So have you noted cases where AI hallucinated? And how did it affect your work? Yes, so um, I think we, we, let's start with the data analysis, right? I think the first time I was trying to use ChatGPT, I, I uploaded a transcript and I asked ChatGPT, okay, can you go to the transcript and develop codes for me, right? Codes are phrases that represent significant information uh, and also address your research question. And then I asked the system, okay, can you extract relevant information from the data in support of the code, right? And I realized that the information that the system extracted was, has nothing to, to do with the data, right? It wasn't coming from the data. The system is making things up. So it supports the fact that the system can provide you wrong information. And as a researcher, you always have to check. So what I do is that when you get that response, you have to make sure that you have to look for the asset or information that has have been extracted. You have to look for it from the data and see whether it's really from the data, right? And I think that's just the way that you can go. Um, I, I do it. So there is always a possibility of the system giving you wrong information what you can do is that you first have to you have to check make sure that everything is right secondly you have you can let the system do some kind of self evaluation right so you can say that as a qualitative aspect um with an experience of reviewing themes and codes can you review the code that you have generated and making sure that they reflect participant information right and the system can do some self-reflection and identify things that are wrong, right? And also you can ask the system to show their work, right? So can you show me how you came up with these themes? Can you show me how you came up with the, these articles, right? The system can provide you step-by-step -step of how it came up with. So letting the system, questioning the output, reviewing the output, uh, letting the system do self-reflection and self-evaluation is very important. And also, you can also use, uh, you can also ask the system a uh, question in a different way, right? The same way that you are interviewing participants, you can ask a, a participant a, a question, and if you are not getting the right answer or the good information, you can ask a follow-up. So the same way you can ask the system, okay, um, can you provide me more information or can you provide me other themes, right? So continuously asking the system question will be helping you to get rich information. The last one is, can you ask the system to provide you the knowledge that it extracted that information from? This is where perplexity AI comes in, right? Perplexity can give you the information and also show you the source of the information. If you are using um, GPT plus, the system can show you maybe website information where the, uh, the, the information that supports the output that it has generated. So there are many ways that you can check and make sure that you, know, you are getting rich information, but it's a skill that you have to develop. It's not one day. As you continuously have an interaction with the system, as you continuously questioning the output, you will learn, you develop your own skill to uh, help you to get right information from the system. I agree. And I, I had an instance where ChatGPT, well, 
hallucinated on me. I was doing a piece of research for um, institutions in Japan, but I, I wasn't getting much leeway because when I used Google, I got back things in Japanese. So I said, okay, let me use ChatGPT. And ChatGPT gave me a list of Japanese institutions. Luckily, I checked with the Japanese stakeholders who I was doing this piece of research for, and they're like, half of these organizations do not exist. So that's the first. As you say, Dr. Adu, you check and verify the information. When I went back into ChatGPT and I was like, where did you get this list of organizations from that you shared with me? And ChatGPT mm -hmm. said, I made it up. There you go. <laughs> right? There you go. The, All right. The, but, the, the system is sometimes honest, right? And I yes. think that, that, that's interesting because, you know, um, you know, they are also not good in math, some of them, right? So if you ask them about, let's say, find the average of this or find this one, and they give you the wrong answer, and it's, you tell the system, this answer is wrong, and the system can apologize to you. So I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm in language model. I'm not good in math, right? So sometimes the system is a little bit honest and provide you that information if you question them, right? So try and question them. Don't just accept everything that you receive. If you are doubting, you have to question it. And that's why um, having expertise in areas um, will be very good. Um, um, in your area will be very good, right? So um, as a qualitative researcher, when I'm looking at the data and I ask ChatGPT to give me information, and because I have a background in um, coding data, I know how the code looks like, I know how things look like. If the system gives me wrong information, I will know, right? Mm -hmm. So um, your expertise is also important. That's why I, um, AI may not replace you per se, right? But AI can accelerate the process in terms of what you do, right? You're still going to be an expert, but somebody is doing some job for you and then you review be the best and you do the very time that you do that. All right. Thank you. So Beatrix has a question, which is a nice segue, and that is what do you think about using AI for interpretive analytical approaches? For example, BQ approaches. Yeah, so um you just have to give AI a little bit of background. And remember that the model has been fed with a lot of information, good information and bad information, right? So um, in order to make it helpful for you, you have to create a persona, right? You have to give the system a role to play. You have the same way when you meet me as a methodology expert, right? If you want me to adequately help you, you have to provide me a little, a little bit of background information about your study and what your problem is, right, in terms of the study. And then I will be able to provide you information. So um, it's always good to provide a system some background information. You can even define what we mean by interpretative um, analysis so that the system knows what you are talking about. You have to be don't assume that the system knows right don't say that okay i'm using maybe uh, thematic analysis can you go through this data you can even define thematic analysis for the system to know so that you and the system are on the same page concerning what you wanted to do for you and this is where uh, chat gpt comes in where you can create your own um, custom gpt and instruct giving instruction giving the background giving the role and, and the tax that you want a system to do for you so that you'll be able to accomplish a, a purpose, right? Yes, it's, it's possible that you can use it to analyze your data if you are focused on interpretative analysis. All right. And if you're just joining us, we'll be going in depth in the masterclass on how to create your custom GPT. And what a good practice of mine that I can share is sometimes i test the ai model before i begin so if i'm using chat gpt or claw.ai i would ask first like 
do 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 you do you know what um this data analysis is do you do you know of feminist evaluation because that's my area and he would respond yes feminist evaluation is da 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 da, da. then i say okay could you analyze this data for me using the feminist methodology so i think that's a little good practice a little tip that before you run and assume that the ai model is on the same page with you ask it what do you understand from this terminology this concept and if the mm -hmm. system comes back with something that you are not on the same page you can even upload a document to give it the background and say use this as reference when you're analyzing my data this is a framework that i'll be using so i quite agree with you dr adu and yes that. and also yes that's and, and and the good thing is that there's a, a website that you can test a lot of ai tools and see which one is right for your task before you use it um it's very good to be proactive because there's a lot of ai tools around and everybody is telling you the good part of it right um they are selling a product to you so sometimes they exaggerate the capabilities right so it's very important for you to be proactive don't just listen to them that oh ai can do this and do that can you try it yourself so there's a website and i'm going to show you and i'll talk more about it during the uh, master class um it's it's called chat.lmsys.org so this is what it does right you can choose a model right so when you go to um okay first of uh here you can choose a specific model right so you can see here that i can you can see here that you can choose any model that you want and try it out and compare with another model and then you ask the system a question right so like you can say that what is qualitative research right so you can ask the system a question and then you choose the ai tool that you want it to answer for you and you compare so this ai tool is for cloud ai we call it haiku right it's one of the uh, model and then the second one is um developed by meta it's a free ai tool that you can use we call it open source um, and it, so you can, you know, ask the system a question and see which one responds better. So as we can see, you are now can compare and see which one will perform better. And then if the, the free version, which is the open source is performing better, you don't have to use a, a, a software that you have to pay, right? You can use the one that's free version. So this website is very good. You can compare tools before you use them, right? You don't only listen to people that, oh, this tool is very good for you, but try to ask the system question and then use and can compare. Okay, I think this one is giving me very good information. Then I will use Llama 2, right, to do my ana analysis. And then you can go to, there's a place that you can go. Let me see. Uh, oh, so when you go to this one, it will show you all the AI tools that we have now, the popular ones, you see all of them. And now you see, it gives you the top, um, the one that is, you know, rank, it, it ranks them for you. So you can see that plot three, Opus is ranked first. GPT-4 is also ranking second. Uh, I think they are all first, right? So you can see that you can go to this website and it'll give you the best AI tool around. And then you can decide, you can even try it, try it out and then before you apply it. So this is, one way of you getting access to the best AI tool for your tasks, not what people have told you. Okay, and could you repeat the name of this website to compare different AI models? So it's called, uh, when you, 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 you type chat.lmsys.org, I can, let's, let me see what I can put in a chat box. I don't know whether you'll be able to get it when I put it here, let me try. Uh, I put it in the chat box there. Um, I can also put it in the private one and see. Yes, and, and maybe if someone can confirm who is listening if you have received the chat so we know if you got it. <laughs> and if not, you can watch back the recording or attend the yes. class. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Nini says thank you. So I assume that it was received. <laughs> Great. All right. That is very helpful because I know some persons are thinking it can get overwhelming. All these AI models, which mm -hmm. one should I use? And the thing is, which one you should use may differ depending on your purpose. Yes, like, the task you want to complete. Yes, right? like for me, if I'm doing an evaluation or for my social media content, I, I prefer to use ChatGPT for data analysis mm -hmm. and my evaluation research. And mm -hmm. for my social media content, I definitely prefer to use Claude.ai. Mm -hmm. I find ChatGPT to over the top and dramatic words like deep dive, a word mm -hmm. of <laughs> delve. And that, that, that is too dramatic for my social media posts because then it's clear that I didn't write it. So I like Claw.ai because it's more a um, muted way of communicating. So depending mm -hmm. on what your purpose is, you might use mm -hmm. a different AI model. And do you have to pay for everything, Dr. Adu? Do you have to have five AI models and you pay for them? What would be your advice? If you were to pay oh. for one as a quality, yes. model, which one would you so, pay for? As companies are investing a lot of money in it, they also want their money back, right? So this means that you'll be boom, we are being bombarded with a lot of AI tools. So right? everybody is saying, that, okay, this one is better than this. This one is good, right? And some of them are free and some of them you have to pay. The ones that you have to pay um, um, because they invested so much money in this, right? They want to get your money back. So, or they want to break even. So you have to pay, right? Like GPT-4, you have to pay for it before you can use. But there are some free versions that you can use, the open source ones, right? One of them is called Llama 2, which was made by Meta, right? Um, you can, so um, one thing that you can do is that you can even go to the website that I gave you, explore some of the tools and, and, and see which one can help you to do the job. Some of the tools may be open source, right? So this means that you don't have to pay. But even the closed source ones, right, um, like um, Cloud AI, you can use part of it for free, right? You can still upload your document and ask the system a question. Perplexity AI, you don't have to pay to use, right? Um, you, you can use some, some part and then um, if you want to use it frequently, then you have to pay for it. Chat GPT, you can use GPT 3.5 and uh, for free. Um, but besides that, there are other models that you can totally use them for free. When you go to, uh, um, let me look for the, it's called Hagen Face. Um, let me see what I can get a link for you. It has open ended sources that you can go there. It's a platform that has free models there that you can use and also create your own model for free. You can create your own, like you can create um, GPT, uh, custom GPT or AI assistant custom for you, you can go to that website and create that thing for free. I will demonstrate that when we, you come to my masterclass, but let me give you the link so that you can get some information. Let me see where I can find that link there. Okay, so you don't have to pay for everything. Mm -hmm. You just can use existing models um, that are free to do the tasks that you wanted to do for you. But you know you can test them out first, and if it's working for you, you don't have to. You know uh, you can use it without paying. So let me send this link to. Oh, maybe let me share my screen quickly. Uh, let me see the second screen. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. When you go to hackingface.com, um, you can create your own. You, you click on assistance. You can see that people have created their own AI tool for free that you can use and also can create yours. If you want to create your own assistant, you can create, go to create as, assistant, right? You can see here that I've created my, I created one for emotional support for dissertation students, right? So you can go to the, uh, you can chat with the system. If you have any kind of concern uh, about your study, about your relationship with, with your supervisor, the system can provide you some tips for you to be successful. Um, so I have some for program evaluation, selecting the evaluation type. So 
you can create your own. You just have to tell the system that this is the tax I want you to complete. And this is the role that I want you to take. And then you choose the model, the free model. They have several ones. You just choose one of them and then see what you will get and interact with the system. And then you'll be able to see whether it will be useful for you. So when you come to the masterclass, we'll go through step by step. At the end of the day, you'll be able to create your own AI assistant for free um, if you don't have access to GPT+. Plus. And is that the one you pay for? Which one do you pay for, Dr. Adu? GPT Plus, you have to pay for. This one is for free. Yes, but the which one, one do you pay for? Because I'm thinking people will say, oh. I want the one that Dr. Adu pay for, I'm going to use that one and pay. Yeah, which one do you pay oh, for? Okay, it's GPT, chat, uh, you know, uh, chat GPT, GPT4. So, so is it um, safe to assume that that's your favorite so far? Yeah, because... Your I, yes, because <laughs> even when you are creating the 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 your your own chatbot there you have interaction with the system ordinary question they ask you a question and respond and then at the end of the day it creates your uh, the, the 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 ai tool for you i've been able to create about 15 ai tools um that has been it has been used some people have used it this has been used 100 times um it has been used 200 times so i created it and make it available for everyone for people to use and it's helping people especially if uh, this one what's your navigator. navigator okay yes so let's say you have a topic right and then you don't know the theory that you can use for your conceptual framework the system can suggest something for you we can do it now um i am working on a study about I always like this this example burnout among uh, primary or maybe healthcare providers providers. Okay, okay, and uh, providers can you suggest? Potential theories I can use for my conceptual or theoretical framework. Just like that. So you see, the system has suggests some theories that you have to you can review and um, get access to right you can even ask the system can you run them for me right uh or can you give me link to this um so that i can read more about all these theories so you see how imagine there's no ai tool like this you have to look for articles you have to go through identify all these theories you have to read about them and it's taking a long time. This within seconds, at least you have five theories or models that you can look at and read more about so that you can make a decision. And you see the reason why AI will accelerate research process. You see the reason why AI will make research so less stressful for you. It's amazing. Yes, so. indeed it is. Geronda has a question. Is there really a big difference between ChatGPT 3.5, which is the free version, and ChatGPT 4, which is paid? Is there a big difference? There's a big difference. The one, the main difference is that you have to pay for it. <laughs> you have to pay for the GPT 4. Okay, so the main one is that for GPT 4, you can attach a document. You can see here, I can attach a document, right? and then ask the system questions, like if you have a transcript, you can attach. GPT, when we go to, let me click on and go to GPT 3.5, there's no way that you can attach a document, right? So this is where, if you don't want to pay for um, GPT 4, then you can use Cloud AI for free because you'll be able to upload your transcript and ask the system questions, right? So this is where, you 
you can get to your destination without paying because there's so much AI tools around. You just have to explore and see if you cannot afford, look for the free version. They are there and it can do similar things as what you have done, uh, the, what the, the paid version can do for you, right? And so you, you have, and then for GPT-4, you'll be able to create your own um, uh, custom GPT, like what I've you know created here, that I can you know create one that is um, AI agent that can do a specific job for me, right? So there's a lot of options here, and you can also use the ones that are available online. So you can see that people have also created their own chatbots that they can also use. They are make it, they are made it public, so you can use them. So there's a lot of options for you if you want to, uh, if you pay for that, right? Uh, so so there's a vast difference. So we are right up on to time. So any last words before we sign off? Okay, so I just want to know, thank you for all for coming. I really appreciate your time. And uh, we'll be doing this kind of um, live program and we will inform you. And also, I just, you know, the takeaway here is that see AI2 as an assistant, right? Don't see it as taking over your tax or your job. Seeing it as helping you to complete a job that will, you will spend a lot of time completing. See AI as helping you to make things easier for you, right? And also try to explore. You don't have to have a unique skill to interact with AI too. The same way you talk to people, the same way you can talk to the AI system, right? Just explore and see what you're going to get. And um, keep on asking questions and you'll be fine. But if you want to get the skill for you to use the AI tool well, then this is a masterclass that, you know, that will be coming on the 25th. Um, it will be very helpful to join and I'll be able to address all your questions for you and then make the world a better place. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining in. We only had 60 minutes. We had to cram everything in there. But as Dr. Adu says, in the masterclass, we have four days to take our time, go through, answer all the questions. Some questions we didn't get to. There's the link to the masterclass and the QR code. See you there. Bye-bye. Yes. Thank you. Bye.